was really just a full breakdown, you know, everything that you need to learn, basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems, the programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. All right. <clears throat> Today's Friday. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Deal Desk. If you're just tuning in, welcome. Um, I'm live on YouTube. Make sure if you're listening to Clubhouse, go to my profile, click my YouTube link there. And if this is your first time watching, basically I call all your leads. Okay. I call them live. I try calling them twice and I try to lock up the deal or alley-oop it to you, set an appointment, whatever I can do to help you close the deal. That's the goal of this. And also you get to see how I can communicate, overcome objections, and I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer any Q&A you may have along the way, okay? So let's pick up where we left off here. Um, looks like we left off in Tampa, but the next lead is actually in Houston, okay? So let's go ahead and get started there. Give me one second. I'm going to be calling on this Google Voice. <clears throat> so let's get started here. Um, all right, so this one is in Houston. Dial them right now. I'll put on speaker. So this one, asking price, I'm not sure, it says. Um, a lot of I'm not sure. What repairs are needed? I couldn't get the details. What, what's a property condition? Need some work. Your call has been forwarded. Let's try calling one more time. Let me put this mic over here. Remember, homeowners that never want to give you any details, I mean – what I've, ex what I've experienced is typically they're not really interested in selling if, if they really don't want to tell you anything about the property, okay? So we want to get as much information as possible about the property. If somebody doesn't ever want to give you any information, you ask, you tell them, hey, man, um, it, it seems like you're not even really interested in selling the property. Why are you even open to hearing an offer? Why are you even open to talking with me? I do major takeaways because major takeaways will determine if the person is seriously interested in selling or not. All right. You want to spend the right amount of time on the right leads. So if you do takeaways and the person, you know, does not pursue, right, that means they're not really serious lead. So move on to the next lead. Don't waste too much time. Let me call this lead one more time. But I'm just catching that because in the notes, I mean, you know, it, it's very common for people not to give you a price, but if they're not willing to give you any details about the property, chances are they're not as serious as you may think. <clears throat> oh man, they pick up and they hung up. <laughs> let me, let me call them back one more time. Let me call them back one more time. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. Looks like they may be busy. All right. So the next one is actually in Houston. Then we're going to move on to Atlanta, North Carolina, Maryland, Florida, Texas, Min Minneapolis. All right. So let's, uh, let me mark this one as did not answer. Okay. The next one is also in Houston. Looks like there's not much information on this one either, but it doesn't matter. Let's give them a call. Remember, you're going to get people say, oh, I'm not really looking to sell. I just want to see what your offer is. And then you're going to get people say, well, I'm not really looking to sell unless it's the right price. Continue the conversation if they're willing to sell for the right price because we never know what that right price is. Okay. So let's call the next one in Houston. Uh, let's see what the notes say here. Um, asking price. I'm having a hard time understanding him, but he's really open to selling. Okay, good. Word repairs are needed. Couldn't say. Okay. looks like we don't have much information, but it looks like they are interested in selling. So let's see. Hello, Hello Mr. Maldonado. Yeah. Hi, my name is Steven. I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property over there on Tuffley Street. Were you still looking to sell? 
No, no se oye nada, parece ser. ¿Qué fue eso? No se oye nada. Oh, no, no matter how much we pay, do you want to be looking to sell? No, no yet. Okay. Next year. Oh, next year. Okay. So when's, when's a better time to give you, uh, you know, check in with you next year? February, okay. All right, thank you. But he's not really motivated. You heard him say, you know, call me next year in February. Um, one thing that I'll tell you is that um, if if a, if a lead ever tells you to call them back and it's farther out than a week, you always got to cut that time in half. So if he says call me back in a year, call back in six months. If he says call me back next month, call back in two weeks. Anytime it's beyond a week because – Within a year, a lot can happen. You're not going to be the only person they're speaking with. So just make sure that uh, I would call this guy back a lot sooner. It's not going to hurt. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Um, what we got here. So this one is in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Atlanta is a great market. It, it's a very large market. Very, uh, quote unquote, competitive, but it doesn't really matter. A lot of people seem like they get scared in these competitive markets, and I think there's enough to eat for everybody. You got to have that mindset like, how am I going to separate myself from other investors? Just because there's a lot of people in there, that means there's a, if, if there's a, um, a lot of competition, there's a lot of demand. Okay, so don't, don't ever be afraid of entering markets or doing business in markets that are uh, competitive. Okay. All right, so let's give this person a call. If you have any questions, you're on YouTube, go ahead and drop them in the chat, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Okay, um, so this one, they're asking $250,000. they are asking two fifty, dollars fair condition. I spoke to her at a bad time, so she said she'd call me back and never did. I think she said it's just time to sell. Her son lives there. All right, so let's see what we got going on here. So she's asking two fifty. Hold on a second. I'll call back one more time. Um, you know, just because people, I was saying, telling this to somebody the other day because somebody sometimes you'll get leads in your CRM or whatever, and, and you call them and they're asking like right at the zestimate, and then people freak out. Oh, this isn't a motivated lead. It's not a good lead. Just because they're asking a high price originally doesn't mean they're not willing to drop. It really depends on how motivated they are. Keep in mind, a lot of homeowners, you know, they don't know how much they want. They know the least they're going to take. So they'll just go on like Zillow, Realtor.com, whatever. And um, they'll just look at that price, you know, and they're just going to go by that. Let me try calling back one more time, see if they pick up the phone. But don't ever be scared to call somebody that's are automatically asking full market value. Because that doesn't mean they're not willing to drop, okay? Hello? Hi, Miss Cable. Hello? Oh, hey, my name is Steven. I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on Promenade Drive. Were you still looking to sell? I am going to sell, yes. Okay, great. Did I catch it a good time? Well, no. Uh, do I have your name and number, a company name and number already to give you a call back when I'm... You ready? spoke with um, my partner, Dylan, a while back. Is there a okay, better time he can I, give you a call back? I, I can let him know. I will call. I will call you. If I have your name and mm. number, there's no need to, you know, continue to call me. I'll give you a call. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Dylan, make sure you just call her back. Um, she's very nice, you know. No no need to continue to call me. I will call you back. I wouldn't call her back the same day, obviously. But people like that usually won't call you back. They just want to brush you off the phone. And notice I asked her, um, did I catch it a good time? And, you know, she seemed like she didn't want to talk or she was busy. So she tried brushing me off politely, which is okay. I don't want to be aggressive and say, well, you know, it only takes seven minutes, whatever. If she says she doesn't want to talk or she's going to call me back, give her that space. Okay. Just make sure that, um, 
that you do call her back, though. Just give her a few days, okay? So this lady answered. Um, now, I was looking at this property. She's asking 250000 okay? And it looks like properties in this area sell between two hundred fifty to 300000 So she's asking close to full market value. But um, try to dig in a little bit more about her motivation. Doesn't look like she gave you many notes here, okay? All right, so let's move on to North Carolina. Let's see if we can move on to North Carolina here. All right. Um, this person, no asking price, huh? That's okay. Mr. Smith. All right. All right. So I don't see an asking price here. Um, oh, actually, I do. It's all the way to the right here. 180000 Kitchen needs to be updated. Fair condition. Now, this is in good condition for one half bath, 10 year old roof. He has family. Hello, Mr. Smith. Yeah. Hi, my name is Steven. I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on uh, Omega Road. Were you still looking to sell? How about what now? Were you still looking to sell your property on Omega Road? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's time, though. I was trying to find a house over in Greensburg. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Once I find one in Greece, but then I'm ready. I'm ready to sell this to I can't Perfect. sell this because I don't have one where to go. It would make sure I got I got one in process of buying. Or yeah. Watch up, watch up. Yeah, I see here Fernando put in the notes that you're looking to be closer to family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I'd love to see more or less what we can offer you if you have a few minutes, if that's okay. I'd like to give you an offer over the phone. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Okay. Great, great. So, um, Mr. Smith, my process is actually very simple. I just wanted to ask you a few more questions other than what I see in the notes. That way I can go and evaluate the area right here on the computer, see what I can offer you. And like I said, it takes about seven minutes. Um, and also, Mr. Smith, I'm, I'm very upfront with people. You know, we're, we're an investment company. We may not always be a good fit. But if I'm not a good fit, I'll let you know up front. That way I don't waste your time, okay? All right, perfect. So I was looking here in the notes. Um, it looks like the kitchen needs some updating. It's it's a four bedroom, one and a half bath. Roof is ten years old. Um, AC recently installed. Your no foundation issues. Some repairs need to be done. Can you tell me a little bit more in regards to the interior condition? Uh, I don't know anything. Just uh, the kitchen is uh, right around the sink. That's the only thing I know of. The kitchen what now? It's right around the, around the kitchen sink. Around the cabinet, you know, just the cabinet. Right around the cabinet. So that's the only thing I know needs to be done. Oh, the cabinets are the only thing needs to be done? Yeah, just right around the kitchen sink. Okay, perfect. What about the, um, what about the electric and plumbing? How, how's that look? Great. Okay. And I actually see some pictures here online. Are these recent? Wait, what now? I'm looking at some photos on, on Zillow. Are these recent photos? Probably is. <laughs> okay. Was was this previously listed with a, a real estate agent? No, I ain't nobody. I mean, people just go and buy, you know, do what they want to do. I haven't, I haven't had a white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one guy to come in and took all the stuff. Yeah, I saw this was listed. Oh, this was listed about a year ago. Um, right. Gotcha. Now, I, I see here it was listed for $179,000 about a year ago, and it was on the market for 146 days. Um, I mean, taking that to consideration, I mean, did you know what kind of price range you were looking for? You're still looking for 180? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And if you got a cash offer that made sense to you, what kind of time frame, you know, would you be ready to sell? About a week, a month, a couple months? 
I did what now? If um if you got an offer that made sense to you, what kind of time frame were you looking to sell? About a week, a month, a couple months? Let's see, like I told you, I mean, got what I got, I paid. Yeah. Well, this guy's not. Uh, I don't think he's motivated to drop. Okay, gotcha. And you know, there's always pros and cons of dealing with an investor. You know, because it's either you want top dollar or quick sale. Um, and if you listed the property for 179 about a year ago, and it sat on the market, and it didn't sell that price, I'm not sure. You know, you, we'd be able to give you that price only because it was already listed. Um, but let me ask you this, if we can cover like the closing costs, the fees, the commissions, what would be the best price you think you can do? Well, see, I've already told you I want 180. So you say you can't come up to, to, to that. So. Yeah, 180, I think that's a no, decent no. price. I just, um, as an investor, it wouldn't make much sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can think about it. I don't know about it, nothing on it. Okay. So he's stuck at 180. He's not. He's not going to get that price. He's definitely not going to get that price. But that's okay. This is somebody you just have to follow up with because they're not motivated enough. Let me see if he's willing to list it with a different agent. Just kind of throw it out there because this was already listed. Right. Do you have Do you have somebody already working with you in regards to um, helping you find a, a place in Greensboro? Everybody, everybody call on the back. Yeah. They, they, they know somebody there. They, they, they look at what's up. They know somebody. Well, they, 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 everybody can find one, a house, and uh, we go look at it and uh, we're ready to go. Okay. Um, are you still working with the same agent that listed the property last year? No. Uh, we're, they, we, we, we're, we're on our own after this month. Okay. What I can do if you're open to it, um, because I think 180 is actually a, a reasonable price, just depending on the condition. I, I believe you can get somewhere around that range. But, you know, as an investor, like I said, I don't want to waste your time up front. What I can do if you're open to it, um, you know, is we also have a team of realtors that can assist you. Um, so if you're open to it, I can have one of them call you. They can discuss some options and if you like what you're great, you know, if not, no big deal, but at least you know what your options are when you're ready to sell. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You think that would be a better fit for you instead of a cash offer? Right. Yeah. And they can help you find a place first. So what I'll do is I'll speak with Fernando. I'll reach out to him. I'm sure um, he can connect with an agent, and then we'll have them call you and see what we can do to help you out, okay? Yeah, I want to get a three-day room, two and a half bath. Okay. I'll make a two bath. All right, I'll have him reach out to you. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. So, um, you know, obviously this guy's not motivated. I'm not going to try somebody like that, that wants a price and they're stuck on that price for whatever reason, maybe they need the funds to towards other, other property. I can't just, you know, shove a cash offer down his throat. It doesn't work out that way. What you want to do is notice how he's open to hearing options with a different agent, because this was listed last year. Uh, for $179,000 and it was on the market for 146 days and it failed. OK, so I don't know. I actually think that's a reasonable price. I don't know if you'll get one. You'll probably get a little bit less. You know, you see these photos. If you guys are on a clubhouse, you could watch. You could see what I'm looking at on. Um, click the link in my bio. Look at the YouTube. But I'm looking through these photos here. The house is not distressed. It's not a tear down. It's actually in decent shape. It's just outdated. Um, so 180, you know, th that's a little bit closer to the nicer ones in the area. But anytime you give a cash offer and they're stuck on a price and it doesn't make sense, the next thing you have to do is try to offer the listing option. Okay. I'm not going to get into creative financing on the deal desk, but that's also another option. If he doesn't need all the money up front, creative financing might be an excellent option for him. Now, in this case, he wants to find a place to move to first. So usually I refer these to agents. They'll help out, you know, help them find a place to relocate. Well, you got to tailor the homeowner's problem. 
Okay, you got to find the solution to their problem. His problem is he wants to be closer to family. He doesn't want to sell until he finds a place. Okay, but your key, your your goal, anytime you get somebody that wants close to retail and they don't want to cash offer, it's not going to make sense. Don't try to continue the cash off route. What you need to do is I'll repeat it again. So basically what I said is, um, hey, uh, you know, this is another thing we can do if you're open to it. Great. But we have a team of agents. I don't want to waste your time, like I said, but I can have one of my agents give you a call. They can go over some options as to what that process looks like. You know, they can help you find a place to relocate to. They can talk prices, basically just options. And if you like what you're great, if not, no big deal. At least you know what your options are when you're ready to sell. See, when you say it that way, it, it doesn't sound like, um, like, hey, why don't you list with us? We're going to help. It. You don't want to pressure people. You don't want to sound too salesy. You want to make it sound like here's some options. If you like it, great. If you don't, that's okay too. We're not a good fit for everybody. You got to tell people up front. Don't be afraid to tell people up front, hey, we're an investment company. I'm not always a good fit, but that's okay because I have other options for you. And guess what? If they don't like those other options, that's okay too. You want to follow up with these people. The reason you want to follow up with people that don't want the listing and don't want to cash offer and they just want top dollar quick sale now, now, now is because within a few weeks or months, they're going to realize, man, I'm not getting the price I want and I don't, I, I can't sell the price I want. I don't want to list it with an agent. Because it could sit on the market 30, 60, 90 days, depending what price it is. I don't want to pay closing costs, fees, commissions, blah, 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 right? All right, well, an investor out might be the best route. People that are on the fence, let me go on to the next lead. People that are on the fence, I tell them, hey, there's pros and cons. If you do, you know, whether you want top dollar or quick sale, you want top dollar, list it with an agent. But keep in mind, you have to cover repairs, there's closing costs, there's fees, commissions, blah, 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 right? However, if you go the investor route, we cover all the closing costs, fees, commissions, and all that for you, and we can close in the, uh, you know, the best time frame for you. We just can't pay top dollar or else we'd be out of business. You know what I mean? So you just got to be up front with people. Um, so this gentleman, he's open to it. Fernando, you submitted this lead. Um, so I would reach out back to this gentleman. You know, I'm sure any agent in this area would be willing to help you out. Make sure they're investor friendly. Okay. So let me mark them off as called, and then we're going to move on to Baltimore, Maryland. But you guys see how that works, right? People that want full market value and they don't like the cash offer, do not try to, uh, whether it's you, uh, solopreneur, or you have a team, make sure that you don't insist on a cash offer. It doesn't make sense. Not everybody is going to fit the same um, scenario, okay? All right, so let's call the next one in Baltimore. Let me get some water here. The next one in Baltimore. This person is asking 200,000 windows and concrete steps in front, fair condition, roof was replaced, estimated, blah, 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 front steps. Okay, so it looks like it's in good shape. Okay. Some parts of Baltimore are very block by block, so you really have to really dial down on your comps. If you guys want to learn how I'm able to do comps so quickly, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything. There's a video in there on how to run comps, okay? Um, and I run comps on PropStream. You can get a, a seven-day free trial on dealdeskdata.com. Okay. All right. So let's let's move on to the next one here. I love how the first name you put, Mr. All right. So uh, let's give this person a call and see what's going on. All right. Let's put on speaker. While it's ringing, I copy and paste the address. I start running comps immediately. And, um, you know, the way in our business is uh, uh, a property is always going to fall in three buckets. One is needs floor innovation. Two is fair condition. And three is fully renovated. Sorry, I missed you. Let me call him back one more time. At, at the end of the day, the property is distressed. It's a teardown. The property is in good shape, but it's outdated, or the property's been fully renovated within the last five years. That's the way I look at it, okay, when I'm running comps. You know, bedroom, bathroom, square footage is key. I talk more about 
how to really run good comps on my YouTube channel on a video and how to how how can you do it so quickly within seven minutes or less? So let me call this guy back one more time. If not, we're gonna move on to the next one. Oh, it's not a row home. Usually Baltimore, you know, you get roams. This is a uh... Hello, Mr. Torres. Hey there. Hi, my name is Steven. I, I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on uh, Parsons Avenue. Were you still looking to sell? Yeah, but my main thing, I got to find somewhere to go before I sell. Absolutely. Did I catch you at a good time? Do what? Did I catch you at a good time? Okay, great. Yeah, so the reason for my call is I actually want to give you an offer on the property, and um, my process is actually very simple. Just want to ask you a few more questions other than what I see in the notes, obviously, and that way I can go and evaluate the area on the computer, see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay, Mr. Torres? Well, someone just called. I thought he just called and talked to someone. What was that? I just got to talk to someone from your place. Oh, that wasn't me. There's somebody from your place. It's Mr. Torres, right? Yeah. Okay, no, that's interesting. That that definitely wasn't us. You you own the property in Parsons Avenue, right? On, property On Parsons Avenue in Baltimore? Oh, hold on. I think I <laughs> this is Mr. Smith, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I guess I doubt you by mistake. Sorry about that. Okay. Hey, I was about to say, like, this guy sounds exactly the same. What's funny is I said Mr. Torres, and he, he kept going like he was Mr. Torres. Let's call. I guess I read out the wrong one. Yeah, I did. My bad. All right. Let, let's, uh, um, let's call this person. He should have told me he's not Mr. Torres. All right. So let's call the real Mr. Torres back on uh, in Baltimore. I'll, I'll call this one twice because it looks like I redialed the last one by mistake. Then we're moving on to Miami, Florida. Let's call Mr. Torres back one more time. If not, I'll answer questions. I see one question here so far. If you have any more questions, feel free to type them in the uh, comment section on YouTube, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, so let me make sure I'm redialing the correct one. Okay, so this is the correct one. All right. So let's see if we can get Mr. Torres on the phone. He's asking 200000 I kind of went over these notes, but let's take a look here at the comps he, he's asking for market value and his his name's not out on the um deed that's interesting you know if you're ever calling somebody and they're not the uh their name is not on the Sorry, property information you do want to ask them they might be the estate you know but uh, the state of, or, you know, the, the, um, hold on a second. Yeah, this is definitely not him. So, okay. So let's see here. Let me stop sharing this. Let's answer a few questions here. All right. Uh, from Osway, if I'm just getting started and I'm looking for my first deal, how many hours should I be dialing a week? This is a great question because a lot of people ask this. And to be honest with you, if I'm just starting out, I would dial until my ears bleed out. Like I would dial as much as I can. Everybody's schedule is different. Some people may get a deal. I know some people that got their first deal within a few hours calling. I know some people that got their first deal within a few weeks of calling. But you have to make time for it, okay? Um, you know, I, a minimum, I would say two to three hours, you know, minimum. That's just my two cents. When I first started, I mean, you're, remember, you're going to get a lot of wrong numbers, you're going to get a lot of F you, your scam, you know, I don't want to sell. Uh, but you're just going to get a lot of people. You're going to get also a lot of people that may be the incorrect number. That's just how the game is. So 
Um, to answer your question, dial as many, you know, as many hours as you can within your schedule. I would highly recommend minimum two to three hours because that's going to give you enough time to talk to people. Another thing is, if you're not doing this already, I highly, highly, highly encourage anybody cold calling, especially starting out to have a power dialer. Okay. It's basically a, a, a software or system that you upload numbers on and it can dial up to, you know, 10 numbers at once, basically, because uh, I see a lot of people make the mistake. And I've done this myself too, but if I pull a list, I skip trace a list and I'm using Google voice to dial each single one, it's going to take a long time. So I'm not really good at math, but let, let's just say this. Let's say any good skip tracing software will give you between five to 10 numbers, right? So let's just be conservative at five. So let's say you pull 2000 records. Okay. And let's say after you skip trace them, you get 1500 back. All right. So, um, that's 500 that, you know, some systems, they charge you for whatever you skip trace. You should only find a good software that charges you for results. Um, let me pull this up here, by the way. You could see all the resources I use on ritoolbox.com. But um, let me pull this up. So if you have 1,500 leads and let's say you skip trace them and let's say you get five numbers, that's 7,500 numbers because each lead's going to have a few numbers, okay? But that, do you think you want to call 7,500 numbers one by one? No, you should not, and I would not encourage that because you're going to get frustrated, okay? Um, use a system that works best for you. You know, when I first started, I used Mojo, um, you know, and then when I was a little bit more advanced, I used like Zen Call. There's a bunch of things out there, Zen Call, Air Call. I, right now, I use Call Tools. I, it's just what works for me. I know a lot of people use different things, but um, call tools is what works best for me. And the thing is with call tools is that um, it, it's a month to month. You're not locked in for a year. If you don't like it, you know, uh, you can always cancel. But all these other systems, um, you know, I started using Mojo. They would upsell you on things that, you know, shouldn't be upsold, like call recording. And I don't know how it is now. It may have changed, but why would I have to pay extra for call recording? You know, it's just uh, other these little things before you know it, it's a lot more expensive. So um, I've used call tools. Let me drop this thing here. I'm going to give you guys a link that will waive $400 at, off the activation fee. And then um, it'll give you $20 off a month. And it's month to month. Okay. So uh, I use call tools. For those of you asking, this is what I, what it looks like. Check them out. Um, Shawnee Clark, you know, you got a lot of websites. You get a robot that says, you know, type in your email, whatever, to, to contact them. But this is a real person. She's amazing. Check these people out. Uh, Call Tools is pretty sharp. Tell them I sent you. They'll give you a, a fat discount. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, you know, it doesn't. You know, it's not always one size fits all, but I just like call tools. So when you're cold calling, call a minimum two to three hours a day is my, what I recommend and make sure you get a power dial or else you're going to be pulling your hair out. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, can you use total assessed value as a comp or anchor price? Yes and no. No, you should not use it as a comp because it's not a, um, like a comparable property, Right. Yes, you can use this as an anchor price depending on the property because you're going to come across a lot of properties. Let's say they're out in the middle of nowhere, like in a rural area. There's no houses. There's no land. There's nothing. Depending on market you're in, and most of the time this is the case, the total assess, uh, value, the tax records, it'll be much lower, right? So in Tampa, the assessed value is what, always lower. And if there's no data, number one, you should always analyze the markets you're going to be calling in. Right, make sure there, you know, there's activity in those markets. There's investors, cash buyers buying. But if you can't find any data, start off with a total assessed value. And typically, I'll do a few things. I'll go on Zillow. I'll let's say the estimate's a hundred thousand dollars. My uh, my max offer is fifty thousand dollars. This I only do this when I'm getting leads out in the middle of nowhere, where there's absolutely no data. Because keep in mind, even if you lock up the deal, it's going to be hard to sell because who's going to buy it? Typically, those kinds of leads, 
will be uh, sold to individuals who just want to purchase it for personal reasons, whether it's land or a house. So I usually um, work a lot with agents in those, okay? With those deals. So um, just make sure in your market that the total assessed value is a lot lower, all right, than the actual value. Um, go on Zillow, look at this estimate, take 50% off, use that as your max. You want to be very, you almost want to be overly conservative when you're locking up deals in areas that there's nothing, all right? So uh, don't use it as a comp because it's not necessarily comp. Yes, use that as an anchor price. Keep in mind, if you guys are new to this whole anchor price thing, an anchor price is simply, um, an anchor price is simply, it's not an offer. An anchor price is a simple way to get somebody's reaction. Because remember, homeowners always know the least they're willing to take. They they just may not always know what their property is worth. You know what I mean? That makes sense. So you got to separate that mindset of my property is worth 200000 but since I need to relocate and I don't want to list it, I'm willing to sell for hundred thousand. Okay. So if they don't, if they want to play hardball, they don't, they don't want to show their cards. You simply want to say, or, um, you know, anchor price, you want to give them an anchor price and see how they react to it. Sometimes they will respond with a number. That's the beautiful part about this. They will respond to the number. Okay. All right. So, um, that's what I do with that. Um, do you still use smarter contact? If not, why not? I actually still use smarter contact. I do uh, you still use smarter contact. Smarter contact is great for the cash buyers. I also use um, batch leads. I mean, that's more for sellers. It's not as cash buyer friendly, but when we're blasting our properties, we still use smarter contact. So I do like smarter contact. Um, Steven, I need your help. There's a lady in Tampa who has 10 houses who's a lukewarm deal. Please submit it. On the oh, here, I'll give you guys this. Um, let me pull this up. If you have any leads, if you're listening on Clubhouse or watching YouTube, if you have any leads you need to submit, you'd like to see me to call live, it's not too late. I may I may get to it. Um, go to the reitoolbox.com. Okay, and it's gonna take you to this. Let me show you. All right, let me show you what this looks like. So when you go to the reitoolbox.com. It's going to forward you to this, all right? And you want to click submit your leads for me to call on the deal desk. You click this. It goes through a little questionnaire on, you know, what kind of leads it is, blah, blah, blah. You have to agree to the terms and conditions. And then you submit it. And then you, I'll call them live, okay? So just submit it on the uh, ritoolbox.com. There's a link there for you. Okay. Um uh, Let's see. I'll take another question before I make a few more calls. Are you still using 400 plus on the MLS when running comps with today's market? I purchased your course. It's amazing. Just having trouble running comps on my market with that formula. So I like to go back a year because if it, if you go back two years, the market's going to be completely, it could change. I mean, you see how the markets act in the last two years. I, I try to get as much data as possible with a reasonable time frame. Okay. If you're having a hard time uh, finding comps within 400 days, you could go back a little bit more. It's just that when you get a deal and you push it out, it, the numbers may not make sense. So I'd be very careful. So no matter what market I'm in, I always just go back a year. Okay. Or around 400 days, basically. That way I, I try to get as much information as possible. And thank you for, um, you know, the comment of my course. I, I do have a course. I don't shove it down people's throats, whether you buy it or not. I don't think different of you. I know what it's worth. Um, let me pull this up here. Actually, that's actually on the, um, actually on the, uh, let me see if I can show my screen. It's also, if you go to itoolbox.com, the best acquisitions course right here. Okay. If you DM me on Instagram, I will give you a promo code, okay? Because the course is $500. I don't need to sell courses to be successful in this business. I have an actual business. So whether you buy the course or not, it doesn't affect me. But I will always, always promote it because I know what kind of information is on that that could definitely help you out, okay? So you guys could look for yourself. But this is the course, okay? It's 497. If you DM me, I'll give you a code that'll take 
uh, make it $97, 80 percent off. So um, if you DM me again, hey, I came across you on DealDesk. I like the code for the course, whatever. Hit me up. I'll give you a code, and the price is going to be $97, all right? Trust me, it's going to be one of the best investments you made for $97, okay? Um, all right. Anyways, let's make some more calls. Let's make a few more calls. Keep dropping the questions. I'll keep answering the questions, okay? So let's get back to it. All right. So the next lead we have here, I have all these tabs open. Let me close some of these. Let's see. The next one we have, Mr. Torres didn't answer the phone. Let me mark this real quick as did not answer. The next one is Miami, Florida. Florida. So let's call with the Google Voice and see what happens. All right. So let me call this number here. Looks like you did get some information. They're asking 390. All right, put on speaker. Hi, Miss Ortega. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name is Steven. I, I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on um, 58 Terrace. Were you still looking to sell? You weren't looking to sell your property? Oh, let's say she's not interested in selling. Um, Fernando, I would call this lead back in a week because it looks like here you actually have a lot of information. If somebody's willing to give you that much information about the property, they actually are interested in selling. But some people um, may think it's, you know, they just may not have time. So definitely keep calling this person back, okay? Let me put this one. All right, the next one is in Texas. Texas. Let's call this one in Texas. Let's see, their asking price is 150000 Hasn't seen the property in years. They've been renting it for a long time. Tired landlord. Hello, where's Mark? Hello, is this Mac? Yeah, this Mac. Hey, Mac, my name is Steven. You spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on 55th Street. Were you still looking to sell? No, I think they're kind of holding up for right now. I've got a party on the other line. Holler back at me a little later. I'm still working on them. Okay, thank you. Right. So he said to call them back. This sounds like a really good lead, by the way. Any kind of tired landlord with all the laws and stuff going on now, the eviction, they actually extended that, by the way. I believe it's July 31st, if I'm not mistaken. But any tired landlord right now, guys, they're going to be very motivated, especially if they have troublesome tenants. It looks like here in the notes, it doesn't really show. Let me see here. I don't think that's the case, like they're troublesome, but um, they are. They haven't seen the property in years, which is good in, in, in some way because it may not be in the best shape. Tenant needs to find another place. He did ask if we could keep the tenant in place so they could continue renting. Eh, it depends on your buyer. We've sold properties with tenants in it, but they have to be good tenants. They have to be on time. You know, we don't want tenants that like don't pay on time. They're always late and the property, you know, they, they wreck it. But this guy said to call him back later. So who submitted this lead? Anthony, you submitted this lead. Make sure you call this gentleman uh, um, back because I think this this could be a, a good a good lead. Asking price is $150,000. Ooh, he's asking good price. Let me see. Oh, hold on, I'm looking. I'm looking at a different property. Hundred fifty thousand dollars. He's reasonable. Yeah, he's. I think he's negotiable for sure. Okay. All right. So let's call. Um. 
Let's call the next one. Or we have more questions coming in. Hey, Steven, do you use, do you do auto dial for acquisitions? Yes, we do use uh, a power dialer on the soft phone. Uh, we use call tools. I kind of went over call tools already, but we use call tools. Uh, the whole business is all virtual, and that's what we use when we're dialing. And you can also text through there as well because some people don't like always getting on the phone, but you can also text. We've, we've closed deals via text only. Uh, it's very, it doesn't happen very often, but you will get people that just don't want to talk to you on the phone and that's okay. Um, so yes, we do use call tools as our primary, uh, system. You can, um, go to the riitoolbox.com and get your click on the best power dialer, and then you can get a huge discount with them. Okay. All right. The next one is in Houston. Then we got Minneapolis, Auburndale, Tampa, New Orleans, Columbus, Miami, Memphis. Okay. Let's see. Let's call this one right here. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section again on YouTube. If you're watching me on YouTube, please subscribe. Please subscribe so you can get updated with new content that I'm going to be producing. Okay. Uh, all right. So this one is in, all right. So let's call them first. Never run comps before you call. I don't do that just because I'm on the deal desk. That's just how we do it in our business. And I posted about this other day because you could spend five to 10 minutes, you know, running your comps, taking your time and you know what your offer is. And then they're, they don't answer the phone when you could have spent that time with somebody that, you know, actually wants to speak and sell their house. So Spend more time on contacts and analyzing. All right, so let's call this person. Any information on this person? Let's see. Asking 179. Seller says there's no repairs needed. High sold property. I love when they say there's no repairs needed. So you're telling me your house is... Fully renovated in the last five years, everything from the roof to the AC to the electric. There's always something wrong with the house. You got to try to get that information. And the thing is, when I know what kind of condition it's in, in those three buckets I told you, needs full reno, fair condition or fully renovated, I'm off to the races on the comps. I'm already looking at comps. Okay. And I don't care what else they talk about. They can talk about all they want. But I'm already I'm already knowing he's not answering the phone. I already know what kind of price range I need to be in depending on the condition it's in. If they tell me the roof is 10 years old, AC is five years old, and then I ask them, um, have you know the bathrooms and kitchen been updated recently? And they say, Well, you know, 30 years ago, whatever, that tells me the property is in fair condition. It's not fully renovated, it's not uh, it doesn't need a full renovation. It's not distressed. It's in fair condition. So I want to look at other properties in fair condition, which obviously is similar bedroom, bathroom, square footage. Whenever I'm looking at comps, by the way, and props your murderer finds this for me, I don't want to look at anything above or below 300 square feet. Okay. When I'm anchor pricing, I don't care what the square footage is because that's not what my offer is. Okay. But whenever you know what, whenever you're trying to give a max offer, or give somebody a range, you tr you need to know what number you got to be at, okay? And you got to look at your built square footage, heated square footage. A lot of people think garage space is square footage. It's not. It's not livable square footage. It's heated square footage. If you are in markets that have basements, you have to take those into consideration too, okay? Is it finished? Is it unfinished? How many square feet is the basement? Uh, heated square footage is key. Bedrooms and bathrooms are important, but not as important, in my opinion, with square footage because you can always add or remove bedrooms, bathrooms, whatever, okay, as long as you have the same amount of square feet to play with. All right, so um, all right, I got this lead here. It says seller's first name. I forgot to catch. Seller's last name. I forgot to catch. So what should I call them? Oh, let's see. I don't know. I, I always need a person's name when I call them because I have to address them. So I'll just call them the owner of and see it, see how they respond to that. Because if you don't have a homeowner's name and you say, are you the owner of blah, 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 they automatically think it's a sales call. So they may stay on the phone or they may not. Most of the time, people don't like sales calls. You ever get those calls about uh, you want a free vacation or your car's extended warranty or all that stuff? 
it sounds like a sales call. People are just hang up the phone. Okay. So um, try to get the name next time. Okay. But let's give him a call. See what happens. I'm working on getting dates for a, um, a virtual acquisitions workshop um, on how to lock up deals at a much, much higher profit margin. There are certain tips and tricks and techniques that you can do to increase your average deal size, okay? And if your marketing's good and your acquisitions is good, your business is going to run good. All right, so let's um, let's put this on speaker. No name. They're asking two fifty to duplex new construction. Hold on, it says new construction, but complete rehab needed. Confused here. Um, let's see what happens. Completing your once repair and sell, looking for cash. Okay. So let's see if they answer the phone. Most of the time, if it's new construction, doesn't really need anything. Your call has been forwarded to an automated. Any other questions? Feel free to type them in there again. Make sure you guys subscribe. Let's call this person back one more time. We're supposed to have a bad hurricane in Florida, and it's like just rain drizzled. <clears throat> Looks like they're not going to pick up the phone. Let me mark this. The next one is in Auburndale. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to catch. Um, whoever put that in, they're not answering the phone. So we'll try you. If, if I don't get to your lead or if I call your lead guys and they don't answer the phone, resubmit it because I have a list of people I have to call. Okay. So if I get to your lead and you recognize that that's your notes and I state, you know, the name or whatever, or the city, you know, it's your lead and I call, they don't answer. You have to put it back. You have to resubmit it. So it goes back to the top of the list. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. So this one's in Auburndale. They're asking $115,000. We have a lot of great um, notes here, by the way. So let's give them a call. Any warm top leads you guys have, make sure you submit them. Sometimes, you know, you submit leads. You may not even be watching the show. And then I lock the deal up, which is, has happened on some previous episodes. I lock the deal up live, and then I call you. Hey, I got your deal, okay? So um, just make sure you guys always submit any leads that you'd like me to call, okay? Anyways, this one's in Auburndale. They're asking 115. Let's see if they pick up the phone first. I'll pull it up here. Google. Don't really come across too many sellers with uh, Google phone numbers. Call them back again. Is this the right number? Yeah, this is the right number. This is an, a Tampa area code. All right, so let's call them back one more time. Two one eight hundred fifty square feet. How much are they asking for this? One hundred fifty. Hello, Matt. Hello, Matt. Yeah. Hey, this is Stephen. Um, I believe you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property in Polk Street. Were you still looking to sell? Yeah, but can you call me back later? I'm, I'm in the middle of a meeting. Sure, no problem. What, what's a better time? Right. Oh, Stephen Morales. Come on, Matt. We'll call him. Come on, Matt. Yeah, no, I'm not selling that. I'm flipping that. What's up, man? Matt, somebody put you on the uh, somebody put you on the list here on Deal Desk. Uh, Deal Desk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is Matt. This is Matt Tech, isn't it? Am I am I live right now? You're live right now. You're live right now. Oh, somebody man. put you as a lead to call. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Oh, that's so All right, man. Go do go do your thing, man. Go do your thing. 
<laughs> so that guy that guy actually knows me. Uh he's a really um really good investor in Tampa. Unfortunately, he's not a motivated seller. I mean, it, this this is the stuff that happens. You're going to talk to, you know, other investors own properties. But um he thought I was messing with them. As a matter of fact, I'm not. I was calling him. I didn't know it was the same guy until I saw his last name. So uh, whoever submitted this deal on Polk, I'm sorry. Um, Ashley, This he's not a motivated seller. He, he does a lot of flips. Um, but keep submitting him, okay? That's funny. All right, so let's take this off. Um... Let's see. Same Stephen. It was like I live near Citrus Park Mall. I don't understand. Uh, how do you consider a cold, warm, and hot lead? A cold lead to me is somebody that is not motivated. It, you know, a lead in general to me is somebody that's serious about selling. They have to be serious. I don't consider people that just want offers a lead. They have to be really looking to sell. I don't care if they want market value, a discount, a buffer market value. As long as they're looking to sell, that's all that matters because we can capitalize on it uh, regardless. Warm to hot lead. No, hot leads like motivated, needs to sell quickly. Warm lead is wants to sell. There is a slight urgency, but they're not like in a rush, rush. You know what I mean? Um, so cold leads, they drag their feet. They take their time, not in a rush, but they want to sell warm leads. They, you know, there is slight urgency, but not too much. Um, and they, they are, you know, motivated. And then the hot leads, I mean, they want to sell today. Okay. So that's basically, um, what I do. Hey, see, I'm so sorry. I got confused. What I mean is, do you do manual dial or auto dial when doing follow-ups for your acquisition specialists? So it's interesting you bring that up. So acquisitions, um, they do manual dials by the way. Because all they are responsible for are the new leads coming in, their tasks, and that's it. Any kind of discovery leads, because as you get more leads, you call people back, they may not answer. Your, your discovery leads are going to stack up. Discovery leads, by the way, is if a lead comes in, acquisitions calls them, you call them back, right? And they don't pick up the phone, they go into the discovery bucket. We have a follow-up specialist in our business that follows up with all those discovery leads. All right. And as soon as they get somebody back on the phone and figures out that they, you know, really want to sell, they do like a light prequal, like a cold caller, they live transfer that lead to our ac acquisitions. Okay. But there's going to be a point in your business where you're going to need somebody specifically dedicated to following up with those leads, depending on how many leads are, are, you know, you're getting because acquisitions should not be following up with like hundreds and hundreds of discovery leads. They should be focused on, Warm to hot leads, right? And fresh leads coming in. So we have a follow-up specialist that calls those leads back um, specifically. Okay. Let's see. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, all right. So <clears throat> let's call one more. Hopefully it's not another investor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's like, Steve Morales, come on, man. I'm like, Matt, you're on the deal desk right now. Somebody submitted you as a lead. He'll buy deals quick, too, by the way. Um, he's a serious, he's a serious buyer. <clears throat> Ashley, so if you ever have deals, he, he he'll be a guy to buy. By the way, if you ever call an investor and they say they're not motivated to sell property, always ask them, oh, are you active? Or are you actually looking for more property similar to the one you just bought? You know what I mean? All right. So let's call this person. Um, no price in mind. Roof is 13. Okay. Are they going to answer or not? <clears throat> this is a good part of Tampa. So this guy answered. Hello? 
que habla Luba, en este momento no puedo contestar el teléfono, por favor, déjame un breve mensaje. It's a voicemail, I'll call her back. If you're in a market where there's a lot of Spanish speakers, make sure you connect with somebody in that market that speaks Spanish or learn Spanish because people that are bilingual in a bilingual market have an advantage over somebody that doesn't you know, speak uh, more than one language. You go always JV with people. There's people in my market that don't speak Spanish. They send leads to us and we just split it. Okay, so figure out a way to capitalize on these leads. Hello. Sorry. All right, guys. Um, it is one o'clock. Hopefully, you guys enjoy today's episode of the Deal Desk. Remember, if you have any leads you want me to submit, go to the reitoolbox.com. If you're watching me live on YouTube, please subscribe. Submit any leads you guys may have. I'll call all your. You could put dump your whole CRM in there. I don't care. I'll call these leads. Okay. Uh, so the ritoolbox.com, make sure you click on um, the button that says submit leads to the deal desk, okay? I'll see you guys on the next one. Go have a great weekend. Go crush a clubhouse. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you guys next time. And um, YouTube, I'll see you guys next time too. Take care.